Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now this week's video is part two of making my sound machine or apprehension engine. Now basically in part one, I made the frame of the machine. In this part, we'll start out by making the hurdy-gurdy wheel and end up making and installing the guitar necks. Now first, the hurdy-gurdy wheel is gonna be made out of three quarter inch MDF. And I'm cutting the wheel out using this hole cutter. Now I really would have liked to have this in the drill press, but it was too long and it was hitting the support bar. So I had to cut it out using a handheld drill. It still came out relatively good, but it still would have been much better on the drill press. And if I ever make another one of these, I'll probably get another hole cutter that will fit on the drill press. Now, the reason why I'm cutting the hurdy-gurdy wheel at this point is I need it to measure out where the support for the hurdy-gurdy wheel will go because that support needs to be installed at this point. And it would be kind of difficult to install it without knowing where it needs to be. So I roughly put the hurdy-gurdy wheel where it'll be going, that's so I can mark on the support of where to drill the hole for the rod to go in in order to crank the hurdy-gurdy wheel. Now I actually will have to make two of these supports. And now it's just a matter of popping out the support because it was just in there temporarily, and then it's over to the drill press to drill the holes for the rods to crank the hurdy-gurdy wheel. Now one support will have a bushing in it, and this is the one that will be attached to the frame. And then of course to make sure that the bushing stays, I'm super gluing it in. And then it's just a matter of gluing the support into place. And as with anything else on this frame, basically it's just being attached with glue and then clamped. Now using a jigsaw and a straight edge, it's time to cut the sides of the box. Now once you cut the side out, the left side is pretty straightforward. It'll just be glued and clamped in. Gotta do a little bit more prepping for the right side. First, we need to drill a hole so we can access the support for the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And then, we need to drill some holes that will accommodate the tone and volume switches for the devices that will pick up the sound. Now just check the switches that you have. I'll have a total of six switches, and four of them, they're just not quite long enough to go through the quarter inch plywood. So the first thing I'm doing is using a force in a bit is taking some of the wood away. And then I will drill the hole for the post. And again, the right side was installed just using glue and clamping it in. There you see the holes for the volume and tone switches, and then you see the hole for the hurdy-gurdy post. Now in the front of the top, we're gonna to put a reverb tank, but the framing is interfering with where the reverb will be connected. So what I did, I notched out part of the frame, and then I put a small block of wood in there to support the area that was notched out. Now just like the bottom, I did cut the sides a little oversized on purpose. And I'm using the router with the flush trim bit to trim them down. Now it's actually time to start installing the soundboards. 
And the first one I'm going to install is the front one. Now this soundboard is very thin, 1 16th inch plywood that I actually got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm attaching it using upholstery tacks. And since the board is so thin and I didn't want it to crack, I pre-drilled the holes for the upholstery tacks to go in. Now the top soundboard needs to slide in to the hole of where the reverb tank will go. So in order for it to do that, I need to mark and then notch out the corners of the board. And those posts sticking up are there to attach the reverb tank and they have slots at the bottom where the soundboard will slide into. Now in order to insert the soundboard, we have to install the hurdy-gurdy wheel so we can mark on the soundboard of where to cut the hole for the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And these are the items that we use to insert the hurdy-gurdy wheel. First, the shaft is a 5 16 inch threaded rod. Then on the inside of the shaft, the first thing is there's a washer. And then there's a spacer that was made out of the same tubing that we inserted into the support. And then there's two nuts, and they're locked together so they won't move. And then there's a washer, then the hurdy-gurdy wheel itself, and you can't see it, then there's another washer on the other side, and then another nut that's securing the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And then at the end is the other post that has a hole drilled into it for the rod to go into. Now this post is secured just with one screw coming up from the bottom of the box. Now once you mark out where the hole for the hurdy-gurdy wheel will be, you just have to cut out the hole and I'm using an oscillating multi-tool to do the majority of that cutting. Now to cut the corners, I just used a utility knife to cut those out. Now it's time to start making the guitar necks, and they're gonna be made out of three quarter inch walnut. It really doesn't make a difference what wood you use for the guitar necks, as long as it's a hard wood. And I just start out by cutting the strips on the table saw. And there's the pieces that will make the guitar necks. And as you can see, there's going to be two different guitar necks. Now the first thing to do to the guitar necks is to remove about four inches of half of the depth of the board. And this is the area of the guitar neck that will be sitting on top of the sound machine. And then the next thing I did was I installed the support that will go up against the side of the sound machine. And then it's just a matter of installing the under support of the guitar neck. Then once that's done, it's over to the drill press to drill the holes for the string posts. And then just install the posts. Now, in installing the guitar necks, the first one, which is the larger one, you want the center of the guitar neck to be basically in the center of the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And then the smaller one, you basically want in the center of where the first one is to the back of the box. And now it's time to actually attach the top soundboard. And the guitar necks are just going to be secured with screws. There is no glue involved whatsoever because you want to be able to remove them if need be. And the larger neck is going to be attached with a total of eight screws, four on top and four on the side. And then the smaller one is just going to be a total of four screws, two on the top and two on the side. I just put one screw in on the top, made sure it was square before I drove in the other screws. Then once all the screws are inserted, the guitar necks are installed and they're pretty solidly in there. They are not going to move around. Well, that does it for this part of building this sound machine or apprehension engine. I hope you enjoyed it and give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now the next part of this series will finish up the sound box by installing basically all of the gadgets that will make and record the sound. And as always, all you woodworkers out there, 
just get out there and cut some wood.